my goals for this year, and one that I haven't really talked about because I didn't expect to have much to say about it, is to read at least 52 short stories. Now, these are short stories that are taken outside of the collection. If I read a full collection of stories, it counts as a novel, not as uh, however many short stories happen to be in that book. And the reason is because I am trying to push myself to go back and listen to some of the podcasts that I really enjoyed. Hello, sir. I am on track right now to meet that goal. Um, this evening, I am sore and cranky, so I decided to wrap myself in my heated throw and turn on a candle and listen to some short stories. I love science fiction and fantasy short stories because I find that they're so imaginative in ways that are worlds different from the novels that I typically read. That being said, because they're so short, I don't really have much to say about them um, except for what I've read and what I like. To that end, let me talk about the, the six short stories that I have currently read this year. So most of these are from um, authors that I either found independently or were recommended to me, or from the two main podcasts that I listen to, Clark's World or Lightspeed, which I feel like most of these were actually Lightspeed, um, because Lightspeed is my favorite. So, I started the year off with Story Kit by Kidge Johnson. I gave that one in my book 3.5 stars. Um, this short story, if I recall right, was about the components of uh, making a story, but in doing so, it was also telling the story of a woman who um, had some loss in her life and was trying to basically pick up the pieces and, and figure out what went wrong with her love life and uh, how she should be feeling, etc. and so on. And she likened it to um, several classical mythologies. Um, in writing their stories to mirror her own. It was interesting. Um, it definitely made me think. The next one, and I gave it three stars, was The Silent Familiar by Cat Rambo. I enjoyed the premise of this. Um, the premise is that every wizard has a familiar, and each of these um, familiars are animals of some kind that can speak, and the little dragon that this one wizard had um, gave birth to an egg, and that egg hatched, and the dragon that came forth afterwards couldn't speak, but was intelligent, and it was believed that um, if they could bond it with another wizard, that uh, the dragon would then be able to speak. The story took a turn that I didn't really like in the end. I was hoping that it would... Uh, I gave five stars, and this is the short story that I have liked the most so far, to The Second Last Client by Yoon Ha Lee. Um, I love Yoon Ha Lee. I basically love anything that Yoon Ha Lee writes. The Second Last Client was about... Um, how the world was ending and these people were coming to take clients um, to safety before the world ends. However, their clients were not the actual human people on Earth. They were storybook characters. And I would ruin it if I told you any more about this. Um, but it's really fantastic. Uh, if you haven't read anything by Yoon Ha Lee, you should do it. Then I read To Follow Her Home by Lydia San Andreas, and this is my first story by Lydia San Andreas, but she's been on my list of historical romance writers to read. So I figured this was a good way of figuring out whether or not her writing style is something that I would enjoy. And based on the story, which I gave four stars, it is. Like, the story in in involved a lot of grief because prior to the story, the main character's friend had died and the entire thread of the story is um, the main character obsessively trying to figure out what it was that killed 
her friend, and in so doing, some of her relationships kind of fall apart, and um, when she finally like realizes it in the end, it, it's almost too late, but of course, um, it's that romance thing um, that I love so much that guarantees a happy ending no matter what. It was really well done. I liked it. Then tonight I listened to She'd Never Had a Name Before by J.R. Dawson. I gave that one three stars. Um, I was hoping for a bit more speculative element, I suppose, or maybe something of a twist. Um, the entire premise of the story is that there are alternate timelines, and the main character's sister um, had actually been a miscarriage. And shortly after she learns who, what, like what her sister's name would have been, her sister fully formed, actually older than her, shows up on her doorstep um, because she's always wanted to meet her. Because in her world, um, the main character had been murdered by a kidnapper when she was a toddler. So they're spending some time getting to know each other, etc. and so on. And aside from that initial... Um, speculative element there's not a whole lot of speculative there so that's kind of why it, it if it wasn't so short it wouldn't have held my attention and the last one i've read so far this year is destinations of joy by alexandra weinstein i gave that one 3.5 stars it's told sort of like a guidebook or a promo type thing for um travelers who want to go to this newly found eight eighth continent which has always been there uh, but was hidden in another dimension or something like that. And then um, it's talking about the various areas that you can go to as a tourist um, and what you can find there. And I just found it rather ordinary. Um, yes, it did explore some uh, certain things in terms of emotion. I guess it was another one that the premise was interesting, but I didn't like the execution. That being said, it does it does make you think. So I think I'm a little bit ahead of the curve for where I have to be um, in order to read 52 short stories by the end of the year, but that's not terribly surprising because I tend to read a couple of these at once um, and then go a couple weeks without reading any. So if you have short stories that you think that are amazing and I should read them, feel free to leave them in the comments. Until next time, happy reading. Happy reading.